That was to wake everyone up. Here we are on the clothesline, the show where we wring them clean, string them up and put them to dry on the clothesline. Narendra Modi's victory in the elections heralded the start of the Achedin era, but it hasn't been Achedin for everyone, especially the folks at Network 18, or should we say the folks formerly at Network 18, because Mukesh Ambani has taken over and there's been a change of guard. How do you think it played out? Like this? Off with his head! Off with his head! Off with the head! Or maybe it happened like this? <laughs> Oh, this. Are you giving you clairvoyance enough to find the rebel's hidden fort? I find your lack of faith disturbing. Eh, hey, Mukesh bhai, sorry, huh? Don't try to take us over also. Oh, why would he? And if you do, only fire the noxials. Peace, Mukesh bhai. While Mukesh Ambani's takeover was the end of the road for the channel's promoter, Rajdeep's fate was less clear. Luckily, on India at 9, Vinod Mehta was on the case. Rajdeep, can yes. I raise a point which is as important as black money, if you don't mind? Please do. I believe you're going away for two weeks to one's holiday. Don't stay away too long. No, no. CNN, I, I, IBN needs you. No, no, no. I, I, CNN, I, whether CNN, IBN needs me or not, don't I don't stay know. Away. Yeah, aise gharelu mamle aise discuss kar rahe hain live on TV. This should be discussed while you're rambling over a drink or if you're Vinod Mehta. That means while you're live on air. Rajdeep, in my view, ek large do ice cube lana aur thoda sa chowda bhi le yaar. That's more Vinod's style. So, will Rajdeep stay or go? We wish we had a time machine to find out. Wait, I know where I can get one. Arun Bhaiya. Namaskar, I am Swati Raina. And once again, we are ready with the time machine. Let's go. 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 That may be a futuristic concept, but those are some prehistoric graphics. In all seriousness, what did the future hold for India? 2024, Tarakki ki nai gatha likh di gai, Karishme ko naya naam mil gaya, America piche chhoot gaya, Chin aankhe malta reh gaya, Japan technology mein pit gaya. Since most news these days is speculation, might as well go all the way and make it fantasy, huh? This is called Makhan for Gains. Or kisi ke achhe din aaye na aaye, aaj tak ke zaroor aayenge. At least it's all good news. It's hard to compete when your competitor has a time machine. So I decided to borrow my brother's time machine and go in search of more good news. <laughs> In 2030, Modi has found a cure for men scratching themselves, picking their noses, bribery and dissent. 2030, Ramdev Laboratories, in association with Ranabakshi, have found a cure for homosexuality. 2034, the INS Modi is the largest warship ever built. In fact, it carries smaller warships. 2036, not only has Modi managed to integrate Kashmir into India, but he's also integrated Pakistan into India. Makarne Kachu's prophecy has come true. He says it isn't even a country, it's a fake constitution. But after traveling in the time machine, we also learned some things have just not changed. In the year 2041, Rahul Gandhi, the youthful face still of the Congress party, addressed all 25 members of the party to discuss formation of the government in the newly formed 35th state of the Republic of India, Tenjanpat. Ten Janpat is a state with 100 citizens which will go to the polls next month. Congress has decided to fight on the platform of full autonomy. Rahul's youth will be the USP of the campaign, although he's still reluctant to position himself as chief minister due to lack of experience. Another thing we realized after going into the future was that Narendra Modi will give us an interview. Right, Narendra Bhai? Majama. These time machines are so much fun, I tell you. Now, Modi might be perfect according to Aj Tak's time machine. But what about the present? Like when he visited Bhutan? Okay, so he said Nepal instead of Bhutan, a slip any of us could make. Nepal, Bhutan, Sikkim, Ladakh, same to same as we say in English. They look alike, they talk alike, they eat alike, Momo and Thukpa, right? I know that's politically so incorrect, 
But face it, it's how most Desis think. And sometimes that slip up happens, like with Modi ji. Clearly our Prime Minister had China on his mind, but he's far too diplomatic to have spelt it out. Or rather he said it subtly. We heard that the interpreter could not understand Prime Minister Modi's Shud Hindi and got the translation all wrong. So we decided to help out. Watch what was really said. My Bhutanese friends, why do you think I chose Bhutan as my first foreign visit? To see your beautiful Shangri-La toyland that has a gross happiness index? To experience what has been labelled the most dangerous landing in the world in the teeny weeny strip you call an airport? and the pilots squeezing the plane teeth clenchingly close to your stunning mountains. Why would I do that? Because of only one thing, China. While China boasts of their manufacturing industries, do you know of the conditions the Chinese people have to work under? In India, we don't believe in forcing our people to do anything. A red light is optional. If a traffic police officer stops you from entering a one-way street, you can run him over with your car. We have so much freedom, you can shoot a girl if she doesn't serve you a drink after the bar is closed, and then get paroled from jail to attend a wedding and party. No one can forget this footage of a Chinese man standing alone facing down a tank. Now in India, this could never happen. Why not? Because in India, the man would never be alone. Even when you want desperately to be alone, you can't be. Check this footage of the Mumbai siege. This is one time our commandos definitely did not want to crash. We will never ever let anyone go it alone, even if they want to. Weddings, funerals, committing suicide, there's always a crowd. Suicide! Suicide! Even chasing a girl you love. The guy doesn't woo the girl alone. There are hundreds dancing and singing with him, helping him along. China, beat that. So, my cute, darling little Bhutanese people, with your adorable Toyland country, embrace us because we love you and we won't mention we're doing all this just to keep our borders safe. Now, ever since Modi's been elected, we've seen reams and reams of print comparing Modi to everyone from Obama to Thatcher and even to Hitler. And it isn't just a recent or a news media specific trend. I think we have millions of uh, Barack Obama sitting here in India. And he certainly isn't the only one fond of this trend. Why this obsession of making someone's India's Obama or Thatcher or Hitler? But who are we to argue? We only follow trends. So we figured that since we as a nation enjoy these comparisons so much, we'd find India's answers to the international leaders. We'll do a few for you. India's Obama. He rode to power on a campaign of economic revival and change and swept an incumbent government out of power. Not because he had such great ideas, but because the incumbent was too spectacularly bad. They made everyone look good. As NDTV showed us, India's Obama is... Yes! We can, yes, we can, yes, we can, yes, we'll do. Now can we have an interview, Modi ji? Kitna makhan lagaya? Think about it. And Obama's predecessor, he's from a powerful political dynasty. His father led the country and he seems to be the punchline to every joke. India's George Bush is Rahul Gandhi. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people. And neither do we. This morning, I got up at night. Uh, the new Prime Minister of India is, uh, uh, no. They told me they have no boats. So I've lost it now. Okay, moving on. He's homophobic, doesn't give a rat's ass about rules and laws because he is a law unto himself. He's often found by the side of a river or exercising, usually with his shirt off. India's Vladimir Putin is Baba Rambe. And India's François Hollande, he's really past his sell-by date and it's hard to find anything attractive about him. But he still manages to be popular with the ladies. India's Hollande is Andy Tiwari. 
His basic career is working with international banks, even though he has a dismal track record with nothing to boast of and speaks with a funny accent. He has very little or almost no connect with his country, except when given a plum post at taxpayers' expense. But at other times, he heads back home to the United States as banker with an international bank. India's Shaukat Aziz is Montek Singh Aluwalia. He's prissy and he's sweet in an irrelevant sort of way. You feel bad for him and hate him at the same time. He talks like this preppy best boy in class. But he has such a slappable face. No, I'm not talking about Arvind Kejriwal. India's Tony Blair is Shashi Tharoor. He's kind of large and has that Hawaii look. You'd expect him to say at any moment, Kinne laddu pakara? And you wonder how he got to where he got. And no one really likes him, even in his own party. India's Gordon Brown is Varun Gandhi. Moving from celebrity doubles from other countries to desi doppelgangers, you would think that we would never, ever, ever, ever find Oranov's double. Well, we did. He shouts, he yells, he's forever outraged, and your IQ points fall just by watching his show. Hindi News' answer to Arnab Goswami is Amish Devgan. What a name. Black money to get back to the party of the party. What are you doing? This is a straight question. And how can you say that the revenue is actually wrong? Don't you think that this should be the government stand on black money? No, no. In 2002, the chunaab had black money was a big deal. With more anchors adopting Arnab's USP, he really needs to work hard to set himself apart from the pack. So Arnab figured, Forced outrage is taken. Deploy the Martians, throw these goons out. They have no place in our democracy. Yelling at your guests is taken. Dramatic music and visual special effects are taken. So, what should I go for? Hmm. I know, impossible mathematics. First question is to Pinky Anand, who represents the BJP tonight. What happened to the BJP? Why did the BJP lose its voice? Why is the BJP completely silent? Why are we having to force you into some kind of a comment? Why has the Prime Minister said nothing? Why was there no national press conference by India's ruling party? What happened, Pinky Anand? Arnab, that's your first six questions. Which question did you want an answer to? Just a few days later, on the news hour, this happened. Is it fine for Akhilesh that UP records the highest number of murder incidents? Is it fine for Akhilesh that UP records the highest number of cognizable crimes in India? Is it fine for is it fine for Akhilesh that UP records the highest number of incidents of abduction and kidnapping? Is it fine for Akhilesh? Please listen that that UP records the highest number of dowry deaths. Is it fine for Akhilesh that UP stands third in the country in the contribution to the total number of crimes against women? Is it fine for Akhilesh that on an average 10 10 Rapes are reported every day in Uttar Pradesh. Is it fine is that UP fine, saw 33,824 violent Chakar. crimes? Is it fine that UP registers the highest number of crimes against children? Is it fine? But why should Arnav wait for answers? He's got all the answers. Is it fine? It's not fine. But the Our next caller, it's not fine. Rapes. Okay, Arnav, I have three questions for you. Is it okay to ask eight questions without waiting for an answer? Is it okay to answer your own questions? Is it okay to not let anyone else speak? It's not fine. It's not fine. It's not fine. Now, since Arnab has set the bar for dumbing down news so low, his competition has to work hard to take it even lower. But the good thing is that Rahul Kanwar is a hard worker and found a way to dumb down news even more, if that were possible, with this format. It's time to get started with the center stage Twitter debate for tonight. I want to go across first to Dr. Kiran Wali. And ma'am, you will have one minute when no one will interrupt. I think it's... It's, it would be uh, exaggeration to blame them. So not only does the quality of debate go down since you have only one minute, like in school, noise levels go up to compensate for lack of time. Because nuanced debate needs just one minute and 140 characters to explore the complexity of most issues that confront us. Well done, Rahul. Your move or not, let's see you make news even more ridiculous. But wait. Let Rahul lower the bar even further. I want to go across first to Borea Majumdar. Is sex before a big match harmful for players or not? Borea Majumdar, your time starts now. What? We know it's the World Cup. But really, this was what you were discussing? Really? 
with Borya Mojumdar? Borya is talking about getting laid? Seriously? I mean, okay, I'm too conservative, too proper and too old to say what everyone's thinking. But seriously, Rahul Kanwal and what's his name? Borya Majumdar are having a discussion on getting laid? You know, there are arguments on both sides, Rahul. I mean, uh, the debate is perhaps inconclusive. There are two ways to look at it. One is the Pele way that, you know, you can actually have normal sex. The problem is if you go out and solicit, because that's when you extend your energy. So, if you're working the charm, it's kosher. But if you're soliciting sex, it's bad because you're expending energy. Spend all your energy in the chase, and when it's time for action, no energy. So typical. Trolls, no need for rude comments on that. Save your energy and use it somewhere else, but choose. Ah, but it's also easy for Borya and Rahul to say, since they can turn on the charm so easily, baby. This was during the 9 to 9.30 slot. Kids could be watching. Though I'm sure Borya's response left even the adults reeling. Rahul, during the World Cup, Football sells. You do not have to bring sex into the equation. But then it's an old habit of the India Today group to do that token sex issue because it sells. Unfortunately, Headlines Today was not alone in upping the sex factor. ABP News did this. ABP Newsroom is And today, Splitsville will be a task. You have to impress these three girls. Ko impress karna. Okay, ABP, that was the most subtle ad for Splits Villa. Now, Arnab, if you want to trump even that, get Borea and Sunny Leone to co-anchor a reality show for football stars soliciting sex in Splits Villa. How about that? With news channels going to such lengths to grab eyeballs, how are channels like Archda competing? <laughs> Kalia Ramesh Kalia Ab uski nazre sirf zameen par thi Oh where have i seen that before Don ke dushman ko ye baat hamesha yaad rakhni chahiye The dreaded Friday the 13th this month horror stories emerging from UP and we couldn't believe things could get worse but things got way worse, as the news channel showed us. A former superstar, rich ex-lover, the underworld, cricket and big business. This story really has it all. May 30th, 2014, at the Vankhede Stadium in Mumbai. Okay, so that hogged all the headlines, which is fine. I mean, it wasn't like there was a war brewing in Iraq where Indian lives were at risk. In fact, the Preeti Zinta Neswadia scandal was the most important question reporters asked anyone from the film industry that entire week. I think it's a very personal thing here. We should keep it uh, to that. The only thing that can trump a pointless question is a response like this. She is going through a very difficult time. She's uh, filed a molestation charge against her ex-boyfriend Neswadia and she also wrote uh, on a public <laughs> platform <laughs> that we don't get you too often. And Preeti is ex <laughs> so that is a very close friend of yours. <laughs> So Salman might not have wanted to talk about the case, but there was one person who certainly did, and on practically every channel. And I'm speaking here as a woman. She's been very forthright about her life. She's never tried to disguise any aspect of it. I'm not here to give a pretty into her character certificate. Then on NDTV, Shobha got into a cat fight with Tavleen Singh. Shobha Day said that she spoke for the women of India, right, she always does, and supported Preeti Zinta. And Tavleen said, she wanted to say shut up, I think, but she said Preeti was wasting taxpayers' money. But that's not quite how they said it. Watch for yourself. She's using taxpayers' money to make a case uh, about outraging her modesty, which seems a bit hard to believe. She has every right to file that complaint. Nidhi, Mrs. And Day has not understood a word I said. Or what happened was a trivial incident. Well, maybe, maybe you have been hearing hard enough. 
maybe you haven't read enough or haven't been listening enough but the, i'm not here to prove a point to you missing and nor am i here to listen to you prove a point this is day speaking of wasting taxpayers money member of parliament mahendra prasad from the jdu was missing two jackfruit from his tree which originally had nine a crack team of 10 police officers took fingerprints and traced footprints which clearly showed the thieves were children or grown men with really small feet but until the forensic report comes out investigators won't know jack shit however they are questioning low hanging fruit and by that we mean the household help and drivers in unrelated news lalu yadav has been serving a lot of katkal ki sabzi mainstream news houses are finally giving news laundry the attention we deserve. Deserve, but for the wrong things the tribune carried an entire article on the contents of a mysterious fake letter which as it turns out was a satirical letter written by news laundry's contributing editor anand ranganathan as part of a doodle series we've been carrying this one was on vinod mehta's doodles this is almost as bad as nitin gadkari's lawyer citing a faking news article as evidence of contempt of court against prashant bhushan and there's the world cup These are the finest footballers in the world who can do magic with the ball at their feet. But when it comes to just turning and looking into the camera, ouch. Maybe they could learn from them. What is with this pose? Why is this the standard look into camera pose? who knew there was something journalists could teach footballers though we know journalists could definitely teach the anchors of cafe rio a thing or two while the world cup in brazil has kept everyone busy we've been busy working on the launch of our now operational i pay to keep news free campaign we do hope you pitch in and support us so that we can revolutionize the paradigm of how news media is funded sabko independent news chahiye paise kaun dega the daily show has 15 writers clothes line has him you said you want more and more more often we want to give you more except the more we give the less we have network 18 has ambani the times group has ads lots of ads we don't have either but we do have you likes shares and favorites are great but to keep news laundry free we need you to chip in Will you pay to keep news free? Well, that's a wrap for the week. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and subscribe to our newsletter. If you have any moments from journalism that made you go oh wow or oh crap, write in or tweet to us. We are the change. You are the change for better or worse. Never do nothing. Stay connected, stay online.